Hello world, I go by Angelot, and this is a tributary freestyle. What I want to do right now is talk about colors and color scales. So let's make a little data, just make 10 numbers, make some recs, go to that. Let's uh, bind some data to them, and let's append some rectangle. All right, let's give them some properties. Let's start with a very basic width. I see some up here. Um, let's move them down a bit. Uh, let's move them down a little bit more. That'll do for now. Then let's make x function d and i, and we will return i times 10. Let's stretch them out. Let's do 50. Let's make these a little bit thinner. There we go. Let's add something here, another 50 maybe. And let's scoot these over. All right, so now what we really want to do is give these little rectangles some color. So let's set the fill attribute. So now they're all red, they're all blue, they're all whatever. But of course, whenever we're doing D3 and stuff is data driven, we want to make this a function of the data or sometimes even just the order. And let's start with the order because it's easier. We're going to need to return the color. All right, that works. But let's make a color scale. We can start with just a built-in D3 one. All right, so now we see how they're all different colors. That's great. Um, there's a couple of these. There's a color 10, 20, D, C. These are all nice. No, nope, no D, no A. So these are all nice preset colors. But let's say we want to make our own color scale, right? Let's make our own here. And you know, let's say we want to choose a bunch of colors, right? As soon as we start doing this, that's not going to work because color scale is actually a function. You see down here it takes i. But what we can do is we can actually make an ordinal scale. And now, every color we have here will be added to the cycle. Keep adding colors. That one's not very visible. Let's go through here. Now choose some different stuff. And voila, we have our own color scale. So you see, this is working counting on the index, right? And for this, the data is the same as the index. But let's say we want to do this as a, um, you know, some kind of scale that's not ordinal, so not discrete values, but some continuous range. For that, we'd want to make. here a linear scale. So let's see how this will work. So let's say we want to go from our numbers from 0 to 10 is our domain of our data, right? Because this range goes from 0 to 10. Or it gives us numbers between 0, zero and 9. Um, from 0 to 9. Now the range, let's say we want to choose between how we just start with red 
There we go. We have this nice, ugly interpolation between... You see a gradient, actually, between red and green. Now, there's a couple of things going on here, right? So, for each of these bars, it is giving us a color based on the D we pass in, which is a number between 0 and 10, and one of these two colors. Now, if we change you know, this, we get different scales and results. But this is using RGB interpolation. So let's change to something like HSL. Oops, broke it. There we go. And really what we should do here is go from the min to the max. And we would do that so that we can now increase the number here. Let's decrease the number of space between each one. Make ourselves a little Pantone palette or something. Let's turn down the width. There we go. We start to see a nice little gradient going. So now we see though with HSL, if we go from red, you know, down purple, blue, cyan, we all of a sudden we jumped across there. Now there's other kinds of interpolations that we can try. I think, let's see here, just so we're sure, this is RGB. Oops. Yeah, nice muddy color. Let's try some of these new ones though. Lab is interesting. It gives a more monotone um, interpolation. And another nice one is HCL. This is probably my favorite. You chroma or something, lightness. So yeah, there we go, color scales.